to the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will kill us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, and in the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain unto the earth. Amen. Amen. Revive us, O Lord. Amen. First Kings chapter 18. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to turn that a little bit. I just figured I'd turn it a little bit. It sound okay out there? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's my thing. I'm sorry. You know, I just, when you, you, know, you, you just like to hear a certain way when you're dealing with sound. Um, verse 19. Um, yeah, we'll start there. Bless you. Bless you. 18 and 19, 1 Kings. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel to Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 which eat at Jezebel table. Now remember we talked about Baal and we talked about Asherah. So sometimes they, they say that he just went against 400 prophets or 450 prophets Elijah but it was actually total 850 prophets. 400 of Asherah, 450 of Baal. Okay? And verse uh, 20. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, do what? Follow, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. Let's jump down to verse 40. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let none of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon, and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there's a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth. And put his feet between his knees, or to put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look therefore to the sea. And he went up, looked, and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say, Stop, and say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot. Get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass, meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Tell somebody the rain is on its way. The rain, rain is on its way. way. Rain is on its way. Oftentimes we, we, we read that and, and we say, and Elijah said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain, um, but he didn't say that. He said, there's a sound. He didn't say, I hear a sound. He just declared, there is a sound. Um, when, you, when you say, I hear, then there's almost as a waiting, like I'm waiting to hear that sound as well. But he just prophetic, prophetically proclaimed, there is a sound. He already, he already actually heard it and knew it. Knew what God was going to begin to do. At this time, there was a drought. I think the drought went for three and a half years. The drought happened because Elijah had spoke the word and said, it's not going to rain for this time. He spoke that word once and then it happened. And then, then you come to the place where he's getting ready to deal with all the prophets, all the false prophets, the prophets of Baal, the prophets of Asherah. And he began to uh, call them and he says, and he's talking to Israel, first go gather my people, go gather Israel because he's wondering why Israel was going between these false gods and God. It's like one minute they want to follow the God of Israel, their God, Jehovah, and then the next minute they kind of want to do these things with Baal and Asherah. 
So they're, they're going back and forth. That's why he said, how long halt thee? Or how long are you going to keep going back and forth between two opinions? If God is God, then just follow him. If Baal's God, then follow him. He basically said, even, even if you worship in this false God, if your false God is that great, just follow him. Okay. Don't, 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 don't say I'm going to follow God and follow the false God at the same time. How can two walk together except they agree? Anytime we're caught in between one and then caught in the other, if you're trying to have your cake and eat it too, it just doesn't work. You can't have a cake and eat it. You can either just leave a cake on the, on the shelf and say it's a nice looking cake or eat it, but you can't have both. See, some of us say, well, I'm going to eat a piece and leave, leave the rest. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what we do. We figure, well, if I can just get just a little bit of it, then I'm okay. But just a little bit leavens the whole lump. Amen. He said, a little leaven, leaven a whole lump. A little sin leavens the whole thing. If I'm guilty in one of the law, I'm guilty of the whole law. That's why we, we like to classify sin as, as though all I did was lie. Uh, you being a liar, guess what? You just as guilty as a murderer. Because when you're guilty in one, you're guilty at all. Somebody said, well, I ain't murdered nobody, but you slept with somebody outside of covenant. Guess what? You're guilty of the whole thing. You're a liar, too. Okay. Because when you move in one and you're guilty of one, you're guilty of the whole thing because God set this thing in order that we can't, because uh, we like to boast almost as we're okay. And he said, no, when you miss the mark, you miss the mark of the whole thing. So we look at things as being like a, a level or degree, but when God sees that he sees sin. And sin brings separation, but oftentimes we, we're going back and forth between two. One and then the other. Well, then this one and then that one. He's saying, just follow whatever you're going to follow. And so Elijah brings the prophets together. I'll tell you what, let's see whose God is really God. Elijah knew who his God was. To the point where he said, so what are we going to do? Go ahead, bring your sacrifices, build the altar. And whoever God answered by fire, that's who's God. Mm. All the false prophets got their, got their bulls, got all that, begin to cut and begin to cry out, oh, Baal, 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 oh, Baal, oh, Baal. <laughs> and they're crying out to Baal, like, we need you, Baal, we need you. They started this thing out early in the morning. This was an early morning prayer. This was an early morning sacrifice. How many know your false God can't even help you early in the morning? You can cry on that thing all day, which they did. They got to the evening, and, and uh, before they even got to the evening, Elijah's just sitting back. He's chilling, eating an apple, or doing something. He's just chilling, drinking some tea and everything. He's just like, man, we're just going to wait. They, they steady call her. He said, you know, he's, he's watching the clock. Like, okay. <laughs> then finally, he just says, uh, where your God at? Is, is, is he asleep? Did he go on a trip? <laughs> Where'd he go? Then they really started crying out to, to their God. in, like, oh, no, like, you ain't going to come at us like that. Like, we're going to start cutting ourselves and putting that blood on the altar. So they start cutting themselves. They start putting blood, their own blood on the altar because certainly their false God is going to answer based on this because in their mind, they cut themselves before they made blood covenants and seemingly they were blessed. We, we talked about that a little bit, I think, uh, a week or so ago, all, all the different cuttings and the covenants that they would make and how they would begin to worship and how they even killed children in the name of their God. But then they call, they call, and finally... Elijah said, man, this is enough. Tell you what, go get, go get, go get, go get, let's do this thing. Go get 12 stones. And he represent each tribe. He said, matter of fact, dig, dig this trench around this thing. Like, I'm about to show you something. Confidence in who God is. Not so much in himself, but he also knew his authority. Oftentimes, some things aren't happening in our life because we don't recognize our authority. We're not realizing really who we are, and we're in identity crisis. Because one moment we are, we're a child of God, next minute we're not for sure. Somebody asks, you know, are you saved? Sometimes you're like, I, I, I think so. <laughs> I ain't thinking I'm saved, I'm saved. Amen. I'm not 
thinking I'm a child of God, I'm knowing I'm a child of God. The only way I'm going to think maybe if I'm a child of God, maybe that's why they was in between two, because moment, one minute they was part of Baal, the next minute they was part of Jehovah. The only way you wonder is if you in between somewhere. And when you stay in between, you never operate in who God really made you to be. Right. And so either he's basically saying either just be hot or be cold, but this lukewarm stuff ain't getting it. You know, you you walking around being two faced. Uh, what's, 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 what's that? What's that villain? Two faced Batman. Y'all don't know nothing about that, but you know, one two faced. You know, on one side, somebody said, man, you know, went to the Marvel comics or DC comics. I'm, I'm there. One side, he looked good. As long as he was over here, he was cool. But once he turned, well, this side was messed up. Sometimes that's how we do. Okay. Sometimes it's like, no, get me from this angle. <laughs> I only want you to see me on this angle. But then when I get around other people, oh, this angle come out. Wow. When, I, when I get over here, oh, oh this, this joker right here, well, he, he a mess. He like being a mess, too. But he only act a mess when he around his boys. You know what I'm saying? And then you get around the saints, and he's like, holy, come on, man. holy, holy, Lord, God almighty. And then we get over here and we say, let it whip it, baby. <laughs> then we, we turn again and say, my hands are lifted up. Uh -huh. Then we turn over here. Mm, the boogie down. Uh, 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 Okay, y'all ain't ready. <laughs> then we like, I, I felt pretty good. Let's stay over here for me. Let's groove tonight. <laughs> and then, then we kind of get turned sideways and we grooving, holy grooving, holy grooving. We don't know what to do. No wonder we messed up and confused because we don't even know who we are. And I ain't saying, you know, ain't no, there ain't no clean song, there ain't no, but y'all understand what I'm saying. Yes. We just walk around, we halt in between two opinions. That wasn't even my nose, but it just kind of came up like that. It felt kind of good. I, I, to, I ain't gonna lie, I had to catch. I'm telling I'm about to tell them. I probably shouldn't even tell them. I'm gonna tell them myself. So I'm, I'm, I'll turn my music on today. Uh, I, you know, I hit the satellite or whatever. They got gospel channel on direct TV or whatever. So I just hit it. I just let it play. Oh, it was good. Now, actually, the first song I hit really went right along with this message. They're talking about the rain. I said, Ooh, confirmation. Well, I was feeling, I was like, Thank you, Jesus. I'm just in there praying. And I go in there to get dressed. And it was still on the gospel station, but that thing had a groove to it. Had a groove. And I got dressed. And then I was like, All right, get my, get my hat, you know. So I got my hat. And then I got my hat and I, I seen myself in the mirror like, boy. <laughs> I looked at myself in the mirror like, and I ain't even like that, but I kind of looked like, boy. And I was like, uh, uh, uh. And I was like, that's supposed to be a church song. I was like, that made no sense. No sense. I was like, what kind of church song was that? Because that thing turned me, boy, made me like, oh. I was like, ooh. I was like, stop it, stop it. I'm just saying, God, he just, he just give it, just give it, nah, give it to me. Because sometimes you think, <laughs> ooh, stop it, Sean, stop it, bro. You know, because sometimes we get caught in between the two. He said, well, how long? Either your God is going to be God or you're going to keep serving that false God. And many times we're calling on that false God and we wonder why I'm none the better is because it can't help you. Amen. You know, we turn into all kind of other stuff just to get some help. They was waiting for that God to answer. That God never answered. Elijah said, put some water on this altar. Do this. Go get four barrels. You want to go get some water during a drought? Water is very precious. The very thing that we're lacking, you want us to go get? Because when it's time to really for God to come through and purify, that means there's going to be a sacrifice. Sometimes you have to grab the thing that's very precious. Water was precious. They needed that water. Not only he said, go get four barrels to fill that thing up. He said, do it three times. Three times, four barrels? That's 12 barrels. But man, what you about to do with this water? Because, hey, we, we thirsty. But we, we got to call out on God. And then he began to call out on God. 
fire. So they licked it up so much it was just dust. It was dry. Licked up the, walk, the rocks, the sacrifice, the water, everything. And then they just standing there marveling at whose God is really God because God is the true God. Once you truly call on him, once you truly bring a sacrifice, guess what? He'll answer by fire. He wants to answer by fire because that fire begins to purify, begins to magnify and help. Take those things out of you that you really don't need, but you gotta lay it at the altar. Yes. But we talking about rain. Let me hurry up, cause I don't even know how many minutes I got left. So let me hurry up. I'm probably up about 10, 15 minutes. And then otherwise, they got somebody have to record the rest with their phone. Get ready, brother Keith. Y'all just pointing, brother Keith. We need you. <laughs> rain only happens. You know, I'm just. I begin to read this. I just want to read just a little bit of this. And I've looked up, I had to Google it because, you know, it's been a long time since I've been in school. I don't remember all that. But how does rain come? And it, and it says all these, uh, rain happens because of evaporation. Yes, amen. It does happen because of the clouds, but the clouds only get there because of the conditions from the earth. Yes, amen. Called evaporation. It said, and these forms of water, it says, so clouds form from the water that has evaporated from the earth. Or plants give off water or oxygen. And it produces photosynthesis. When it evaporates, then it rises mm -hmm. in the form of gas, which eventually forms into a cloud. Right. Or it said it begins to, uh, it said in this, the water vapor must have a solid thing to what they call glom or, or to attach itself to. So it says the solid seed may be a speck of dust, it may be some pollen, it may be a drop of water, crystal, whatever, I mean dew. Is water that vaporized and condensed back to Earth's surface. We see it on the grass or cars or something like that. But it says in the cloud with more water condensing onto the water droplets and the water droplets grow, when they get too heavy to stay in the cloud, it gives rain. So clouds only form because the conditions of Earth forms them. And there's gas that's rising, so you go through this process of evaporation. And the only way you can get rain is if the conditions on earth are met. You don't get those things, that just, it doesn't, it doesn't fall out of clear blue sky. No, it has to have certain conditions from the earth. Sometimes, you know, what? Well, I, I, I was just thinking it's just, you know, form, clouds come and they just get the rain. But it's only get there because of earth's conditions. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So what does what, what, that, that have to do with Elijah and, and dealing with the rain? Because here we are at a place where Elijah is getting ready to call God to open up the heavens and bring rain again. But before he can have rain come, conditions on the earth got to be ready for it. Yes. Matter of fact, the conditions on earth is what's going to constitute whether the rain comes. Yes. <laughs> So he first had to deal with one thing. He had to deal with the altar. He had, there had to be a purifying. Yes. There had to be a cleansing. Had to be a turning. There had to be a, a breaking down of that altar and, and show who the true God is. And so once the true God comes, once the fire comes, there's a purifying. There's a cleansing. There's a repenting. There's a turning. And there has to be a repenting. Has to be a cleansing. Has to be a purifying. We got to meet the conditions here on earth first before heaven can send rain. Amen. Sometimes we're just waiting for rain just to fall out. But he said, I can't give the rain because the conditions on earth haven't produced it. Amen. The only way you're going to get the rain if you send up. <laughs> if there's some evaporation that causes me to have a form to be able to send that back down. Mm -hmm. The conditions first have to be right. So the first thing there has to be is a purifying. Amen? Amen. The second thing has to be a purging. Yes. A purging, a killing. He had to kill all those false prophets. Kill all the ones that were speaking negatively. Kill all the things, all those false prophets that was getting his people perverted and doing things that was not convenient and following the wrong God. Or, so how, how do we begin to do that? I got to begin to repent. I got to begin to have a purifying, a, a cleansing, and then I got to begin to purge those negative thoughts, those negative voices. All the prophets are is a voice. They, they're a voice, and even in that day, there was a connection to their God. 
But it was the wrong connection. So you got to think, what am I connected to that I don't need to be connected to? What am I connected to that's taken me away from Jehovah? Yes. What am I connected to that's got me going between two? So I need to have a purifying and I need to have a purging. If there's no purging, there's no condensation. There's no evaporation. If there's no evaporation, there's no rain. If there's no rain, you're in a drought. If you're in a drought, you eventually going to die. Yes, amen. If you're going to die, that means you have no life spiritually. Whoo, hallelujah to God. Water brings life. Yes. We need the rain. Yes, amen. We need that water. We need it to come in our lives. We need it just to sustain life here. No water, famine, famine results in death. If you don't have the heavens, if you don't have rain in your life, guess what? Famine, drought, death. Anytime there's death, you begin to eat on things you have no business. When you have death, when you have famine, you eat on, you become cannibalistic. That's right. Uh, I think it's in Ezekiel, one of those other major prophets, I believe, where those talks about the drought was so heavy, they start to even eat their children. Uh, principle in that, uh, let, let a church have a drought. Guess what? You start biting and devouring one another. Ooh, hallelujah. When you have a drought in your life, you start chewing and biting and gossiping and biting on one another. Why? Because I got to eat on something. I just got to find something to eat on. Why are you eating on everybody else? Because there's a drought in your life. That's good. That's good. That's good hallelujah to God. So it has to be what? A purifying? What's the second one? A purging? And then it has to be praying. <laughs> purifying? Purging? Prayer. He, can, he didn't get the rain until he prayed. And so when he began to pray, it said that he got in a position and put his face between his knees. I can't get down that low. That's as low as I'm going. I would have to sit down. But you know what? God understands sit down prayer. Some people say uh, he was what they was called in a birthing position. Old school birthing, birthing position, they make you squat down. And you begin to travail. And they begin to push. You know, there, there ought to be a travailing prayer from the people of God. There ought to be somebody beginning to get in that position. I'm not in the right position. I need to begin to get in the right position to push out what God wants to do in my life. Sometimes we want to just stay in whatever position we want to stay in, God said, but I'm trying to get you in the right position because in the right position, that thing will get pushed out correctly. But sometimes we're trying to push stuff out and we're not in the right position. We should have a posture of prayer. Mm -hmm. Purifying, purging, prayer. And so what happens? So he begins to call out on the God. Now he stopped the rain in one time, but it took seven times to get the rain to come. But he said, I hear the sound. Mm -hmm. No, he said, there is a sound. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, I hear a sound. He just says, there is a sound. He already prophetically understood that there's a sound. We're not getting the rain because the condition's not right. And we want revival to happen. We want revival to happen in our church. We want revival to happen in our homes. Wherever we at, guess what? We got to meet the conditions on earth so the clouds can be formed in the heavens. Yes. And he's saying once you meet those conditions, once there's enough prayer, once there's enough evaporation that rises up, that's all Elijah did as he began to pray. See, it took a little bit more for him to pray this thing through. We don't want to pray nothing through. We pray once or twice and it don't happen, and then we just say, oh, well. But he had to pray that thing 